nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Okay, the last example we are going to look at is 1D grating. So diffraction grating is a very important device in optics. It can split and redirect the incoming light. And here we have a very rough model of 1D grating made of PMMA pillars on top of magnesium oxide substrate. Um, PMMA is a kind of polymer. It is sometimes called organic glass. And magnesium oxide is, and, uh, is a substrate that, that is oftentimes used as the uh, material substrate when uh, we de deposit uh, multi-layer structures. And let's look at the dimension of this structure. Okay, so each uh, PMMA pillar is 20 nanometer wide and uh, it has a periodicity in X direction and the period is 100 nanometer. And the pillar has a thickness 200 nanometer. So how to simulate this structure? Since it has periodicity in X direction, we only need to model one period that is called unit cell. And then we impose periodic boundary condition in um, X direction. And in Y direction, it is still homogeneous. So here is our um, layer definition. Um, our top layer is a semi-infinite vacuum layer. And the bottom layer, we assume that it's a semi-infinite magnesium oxide layer. Um, and what's interesting is the, the middle layer. Um, it is a PMMA pattern uh, in the vacuum background. So when we define layer, we first define a vacu vacuum layer with a thickness of 200 nanometer, and then we modify the pattern. And the basis vector is 100 nanometer zero, which is pointing X direction. And this time we're gonna write our own control file so we can choose um, the normalization constant at our convenience. So I choose uh, the normalization constant to be one nanometer. So the basis vector becomes 100 zero unit loss and the thickness of the middle layer is 200 unit loss and the half width of the PMMA pillar is 10 unit loss. Okay, let's write our own control file. So first of all, we need to obtain a new simulation object. We set the lattice constant. Um, here we have periodicity in X direction only. So we only need to set one basis vector and leave the other as zero. And then we set number of Fourier functions. Then we define the materials. We have three materials, vacuum, PMMA, and the magnesium oxide. The permittivity of vacuum is again one, and the permittivity of PMMA is 2.25, and that of magnesium oxide is three. Then we define the layers. The top layer is semi-infinite vacuum. The bottom layer is semi-infinite magnesium oxide. And what's uh, most interesting about this, this example is the middle layer. We first um, define a vacuum layer, and then we call the function set layer pattern rectangle to set a rectangular pattern. And we want to alter the middle layer. We want to put the PMMA uh, pillar. The center is zero, uh, tilt angle is zero, and half width is 10 in X direction and zero in y direction. Then let's set the excitation plane wave. We want a normal incidence, so phi and theta are both zero, and we want to mimic the natural light. So we set um, equal, um, equal amount of P and S polarization component. Then we sweep the frequencies. We want to run from 10 nanometer to a thousand nanometer wavelengths. So in reduced unit, the wavelength is 100 
to 1000 unit loss, then the frequency is the inverse of wavelength, which is 0 0.01 down to 0 0.001. So in this example, we directly use frequency as our loop index, uh, loop constant, uh, which runs from 0 0.001 up to 0 0.01 at an interval 0 0.0005. And we set the frequency, uh, we obtain the result for each frequency, we normalize the reflection flux and transmission flux, and finally, we output the result. Here, I have already written uh, this file called exam3.lua, and we are gonna upload this file to the S4 tool. Okay, we have opened up a new S4 window. This time, let's choose Upload S4 input deck. Go to next. And we are gonna upload our own file. And I have already copied this file into the clipboard, so I'm gonna hit paste and then upload. All right, it has uploaded successfully. Now let's hit simulate. Yes, it's our resulted curves. Um, the red curve on the top is the transmission flux and the blue curve on the bottom is the reflection flux. As we can see that uh, this structure has a very low um, reflectance at the calculated frequency range. Um, and the, the horizontal axis is the normalized frequency. And then we can go to the output log and uh, download this file and put it into uh, like MATLAB or Origin or whatever software you are comfortable with and do some post-processing. Furthermore, to investigate the reflection and transmission of each diffraction order, we can use the function get power flux by order. Now, I will leave it to you to, to explore this feature. Okay, we have gone through three basic examples to get familiar with S4. Um, and S4 is actually far more powerful than that. And uh, I suggest that you go through a few examples to get familiar with the more advanced feature of S4 and then write your own control file. So if you go to uh, the first link on the bottom, you will have access to a bunch of examples. And if you go to a 0D folder and then a Fabric Parole subfolder, you will see a few basic examples that can reproduce some um, textbook result. Especially if you go to the Fresnel.lua, you can reproduce the whole um, transmittance and reflectance spectrum at all incident angles. And if you go to the 1D folder, there are a few examples that reproduce the research paper results that has uh, 1D periodicity. And if you go to this paper published on Optics Express, you're, you will see that the S4 can not only output uh, reflectance and transmittance, it can even output the field pattern inside the structure. So it will give you a um, better impression of what's going on inside the optical structure when it interacts with light. And uh, in, the, in the previous example, we have talked about how to um, set rectangular pattern. And if you go to the pattern folder, uh, you can learn how to add uh, different types of patterns, like circular patterns or like composite patterns. Finally, if you go to the second link on the bottom, you will see a list of all the functions available in S4. It's like a reference book. Okay, that's it for our S4 tutorial. 
I'm looking forward to seeing your innovation. Good luck.